these conditions. How has this part of the market developed over the last 18 months? Um, is it still, again, a good space to be looking at? And I suppose would we would we put um, multi-unit freehold blocks in this same category? Can they be discussed together or, or not really? Uh, Mike, I might start with you on that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's an easy way to get out of the hole for uh, for people starting out. Um, potentially in an HMO, it's, it's cheaper for a tenant. Um, I think from a from a, a landlord's perspective, it's it's um, it mitigates risk, it mitigates the voids. Um, I still think there's a there's a huge huge market for for HMOs and MUFBs. Um, I think there's some th things to be uh, mindful of in that lenders are still valuing those properties as single dwellings. Some are anyway. Um, I also think that, that landlords need to be quite careful that uh, fire and safety regulations and, and costs and bringing up the, the property to legal specifications might eat, eat into profits. But I think, is there demand? Absolutely. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, it is easier to get out into an HMO um, rather than buying into a property or maybe a, a higher um, a higher rental payment to start off with anyway. Do the do the yields that one's able to get uh, by doing that? Do they outweigh perhaps the management thereof and some of the aspects of bringing it up to specification, like you've described? Um, I think it's um, it's a calculation that needs to be made, and it really does just depend. Um, there are so many associated costs in regards to HMO. I mean, um, soundproofing, um, fire regulations, fire doors, social areas, insurance. Um, it is sit down, uh, work it out properly uh, with a broker. And um, and actually, sometimes it might be, look, it's, it's not going to work on this particular property. Do something slightly different. But from a risk perspective, clearly there's more money to be made. You're going to get more bang for your buck overall. But it's just whether all of those additional costs will eat into your profits. Rob, is it an area that you like that the bank likes? Yeah, we're, we're comfortable. Um, but I, I think it's, it's I go back to when I first started underwriting mortgages that was probably in the early 1990s. Uh, I know you wouldn't think so, but uh, I did it at school, obviously, as part of my uh, junior school uh, topic. Um, but no, I think it's sustainability and plausibility have always been the two things that any lender's got to look for. So if you apply that logic there, for, for, for the bank throughout where we are, it's about the asset initially. So is there demand in that area for a HMO? Is there demand in there for, for MUFBs? That's the first port of call. The second port of call when you look at the asset is, um, we, we as a lender personally, we'll only lend on residential property, but it's a case of what's in the proximity, what's in the location, is it connected to uh, any sort of uh, commercial unit, whether it's a restaurant, et cetera. Um, you know, Alistair mentioned Canterbury. Um, we, we, we just did a, um, a unit in Canterbury, it was above a Prezzo uh, uh, restaurant, but actually it was such a good asset in such a good location, the, the landlord was so professional, we were more than happy to, to to lend against it because it was marketed correctly, there was good demand there, etc., and there was very good deals. And on the back of what Mike said, the broker actually sent in a complete business plan breakdown of how it was going to work. So, so we're comfortable in that space as long as they're professional, uh, and we can then structure a loan that's determined by what the actual broker wants. Um, so, so from that perspective, as as a lender, we are comfortable as long, in simple terms, as the the actual applicant knows what they're doing. Because um, the last thing we ever want to do is get into a position where we've got an asset that's gone into any sort of arrears because it, it, it's just a lose-lose for everybody. And just to take Alistair's point, it's not easy to evict a dog um, who's been renting a holiday let for their little holiday. So, um, <laughs> no. Uh, on a serious point there, it, it, it is something we are comfortable with. And I think a lot of lenders in our space are comfortable with that as long as it's underwritten, understanding what the applicant's trying to achieve. And without the broker's who can explain that to us and, and a good quality business proposition because it is a business transaction this and as Mike said the, it's the associated his and costs have to be factored in it's not I get x rents and I take y off for management and this is my profit it doesn't work like that this has got to be a long-term investment. Um, Kim is there anything you'd like to add on the topic of HMO? 
Yeah, I think it's still a huge part of our sector, uh, what we're speaking to clients about. I think it's been interesting throughout COVID. I know we've mentioned that they are more management intensive, that's being expected. But I think from the COVID issues that were brought about, I mean, I'm part of quite a few uh, HMO groups on social media and seeing the landlords and speaking to some of them about the issues that they've had throughout COVID, you know, isolation and you're, you're in shared accommodation. If one person agrees to self-isolate, another one doesn't. So I'm hoping we're kind of coming out of that, but that has been interesting topics that I've seen um, in relation to that. But no, the HMO market's a huge one. I think from a broking perspective, um, it's really important that you kind of know your um, criteria inside out when it comes to HMOs. We have daily conversations with clients, you know, about valuing properties. I know I can't remember which one of the guys mentioned it a minute ago, but um, a lot of them are valued on bricks and mortar. So on the basis of it being a single dwelling. But unless you know that there are few and far between lenders that could potentially look at an investment value, but there's no one size fits all. There's no magic um, formula or criteria. It literally comes down to the area and comparables and ultimately what value you get out on the day because, you know, it's so up in the air when it comes to HMOs. And this that's probably the biggest education side that we have with our clients in educating them when it comes to HMOs because so many people are kind of bypassing your, your first investments and going straight for the HMOs. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest educational side that we're having with clients at the moment is getting them to understand, you know, you, you can't be guaranteed investment value on HMO. So yeah, it is but yeah, it's such a big and strong market at the moment.